I welcome Professor U. G. Patagar, I. K. V. C. Coordinator, Dr. B. M. Hiram at H. O. D. Department of Commerce, Srimati Rupali Patel, Coordinator of this webinar, Professor Santosh Basingi, who is the co-coordinator, on behalf of staff of S. M. S. College, Atene. I also warmly welcome all the delegates from India and outside India on behalf of KLS Society and staff of SMS College Athene. I also take this opportunity to welcome our technical experts, Professor Sangmish Talwar and Professor Vinay Kaveri, all the teaching and non-teaching staff and students from India and outside India on behalf of SMS College Athene. Once again, I welcome you all to this international webinar. Thank you. Thank you, Vanyana. Over to Imran. Thank you, sir. Uh, thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much for your kind words and warm words. Uh, I now request Dr. Rubiam Hiramat, sir, the head of the Department of Commerce, to say a few words on the conception of organizing this webinar on the topic of artificial intelligence. Over to you, Hiramat, sir. Very good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to everyone. Uh, today's keynote speaker, Nandini Madam, and resource person, and well wisher of our KLE Society, Dr. M. Gaurav Sir, and the principal of our college, Dr. S. L. Patil Sir, uh, IQAC coordinator, Patagar Sir, and my departmental colleagues, Rupali Madam and Santosh and all the faculty members, delegates, and student friends all over the world. It gives me immense pleasure to express few words about the artificial intelligence, which is the topic of today's seminar, webinar. Artificial intelligence is the ability of computer program to learn and think. Everything can be considered artificial intelligence if it involves a program doing something that we would normally think would rely on intelligence of a human. Artificial intelligence is reshaping economies, promising to generate productivity gains, improve efficiency, and lower cost. It contributes to better lives and helps people to make better predictions and more informed decisions. Modern artificial intelligence, however, has a tremendous impact on how we do things and also the way we relate to one another. At the same time, artificial intelligence has many challenges. To face the challenges, new principles of artificial intelligence ethics must be considered and developed to provide guidelines for the artificial intelligence technology to observe so that the world will be benefited by the progress of this new intelligence. Artificial intelligence is also influencing entities and ethical concerns. There are questions about the trustworthiness of artificial intelligence system, <clears throat> including the dangers of codifying and reinforcing existing biases, such as those related to gender and race, or infringing on human rights and values, and such as privacy, etc. As we know, everything in excess is a dangerous, and so is the case of artificial intelligence. It is the science and engineering of making intelligent machines that makes it significant. In order to throw some light on the prospects of artificial intelligence, the present webinar is organized today by the Department of Commerce under the IPSC initiative of KLE Society's three SMS College Athene. I hope this webinar will contribute to its level best to the stakeholders of artificial intelligence. Once again, I wholeheartedly welcome our keynote speaker, Dr. Nandini Shidnal, Madam, Senior Lecturer and of IT Engineering, Academic Department, Sydney, Australia, and Resource Person, Dr. Anna Saeed Gurav, Sir, uh, Professor, Department of Commerce and Management, Shivaji University, Kolhapur, and all the Okay, uh, looks like uh, we have a slight technical glitch from uh, uh, Hiramat, sir. Uh, apologies for that. 
Uh, so, uh, you know, what following what he wanted to say was, uh, we finally wanted to thank uh, uh, Dr. Nandini Ma'am for joining us, and we wanted to thank Professor Guru sir for joining us uh, through uh, you know uh, through this platform. And we are very much looking forward to uh, your talk. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Hirmat sir. Uh, so. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we are pleased to introduce to you uh, the resource person of today's first technical session. And for that, I call upon Ms. Aradhana Somaya to do the honors. Over to you, Aradhana. Am I audible, sir? Uh, yes, Aradhana, please go ahead. Uh, very good afternoon, good morning, and good evening by, to one and all present over here. And I'm very pleased to be the part of this international webinar on artificial intelligence, which is conducted by Sri Shivayogi Murugendra Swamiji Arts, Science and Commerce College, Athene, and which is organized by IQAC Initiative as well as Commerce Department. So it is my immense pleasure to introduce our today's keynote speaker, Dr. Nandini Sidna Madam. Madam completed her B from Gopte Institute of Technology Belgium and M take from MS Ramaya Institute of Technology Bangalore and PhD from VTU. She joined KLE, KLE Engineering College Belgium in 1993 and served the institute to the best of her efforts till 2014 November. She is thankful to KLE management for having given her an opportunity to serve in the prestigious institute. Madam offered pranams to the Saptaharshis for their initiation and sacrifices in laying down their initiation and sacrifices in to the foundation of education institutes in Karnataka. That has spread to most parts of India and across the seas. Madam also served at VTU on deputation as PG coordinator for five years and was responsible for conducting online exams in 2005 when there was no Zoom. Madam has been a researcher and educator for over 20 plus years. She has held a number of academic positions like academic manager, head of department of universities and education institutes, both in Australia and overseas. She has done every academic job from casual to professor. Her research interests lie in the area of cognitive computing using intelligent agents, data analytics, and semantic web. She has more than 30 research publications in peer-revived journals and has presented some of them in international conferences. She has published a couple of books on cognitive computing for bidding in e-auctions, Scholars Press, and a C programming laboratory handbook for beginner by Valley Publications. Madam has developed and practiced innovative teaching practices such as active and experiential learning. She had developed intelligent multi-agent framework for adaptive e-learning as a part of Master Thiers' work. Further, she was the lead member to implement virtual learning and assessment for specific master courses of VTU in 2005. She is now an active member of a sponsored project at MIT on flipped learning and analytics. She is practicing feed-forward learning for industrial-based project units. I'm very lucky to have such a great personality in front of all of us. You are an inspiration to all of us, ma'am. And I'm very thankful to giving me an opportunity to introduce such a great personality. Thank you. Thank you, one and all. Over to you, Imran, sir. Well, thank you so much, Aradna. Thank you so much for your elaborate and extensive uh, introduction of uh, uh, Dr. Nandini, ma'am, which proves her, uh, uh, you know, which is a testimony of her academic excellence. Thank you so much once again, Aradhana. I now kindly request uh, Dr. Nandini Siddha, ma'am, to please address the virtual gathering. Over to you, ma'am. Uh, thanks, Imran, sir. 
respected principal SL Patil sir, BM Hiremat sir, and other respected senior faculty members there, and all the young budding learners. It's really a privilege to be part of KLE once again to share my thoughts and I can say uh, the information that I have and kindle thoughts in each and every student so that they take things from here and move on further. It's not that uh, we are not learning in this uh, period of time. All of us are lifelong learners and I have learned a bit more than somebody else, or maybe the students are learning faster than what I can learn. Their learning curve is generally better than our learning curve. So in all light of this, I would say that here are some of my thoughts on artificial intelligence, which is boosting the fourth industrial revolution. Yes, paying our pronouns to the Saptarishis, we start our presentation here. Yeah, I would like you to read this unintentional funny stories. And if you can conclude, any of you can understand, then it makes really more sense. Please read them as early, quickly as possible. This is the first story. So is the story or the right one? Do you understand what is not right in the story? This story, if you read, it's just a four line story. What it says is he ate the beehive, which really is not possible. Okay, maybe some of you are typing there. I'm not, uh, I'm not going to see it for now. And then the next one is another one. Yeah, Henry squirrel was thirsty. And you can just read this couple of lines. So what the story tells us, this story tells us that drowning is because of gravity. So the focus is here on the force and it's not highlighted that somebody else is drowning, the human being or whoever is there, the living being is drowning. So here, forgot that drowning, not the force is most important, but the drowning is more important. And then the last one, This story is a common one. So what here it says is it's not physically wrong, not law wrong in a language way as well, but wrong in the sense that it's not aware of what is relevant to communicate and what is not. So what I would like to say is we all read things, but we don't analyze. We are in the world of full information with us, but how many of us process that information? So to begin with my talk, it has got three aspects. So let me start with what is data? What you understand by data? Uh, dear friends, data is everywhere and it's simply a collection of some facts which may be true or false. And when we process this data, we get information. Once you process the information, we get knowledge. If the knowledge is represented and processed well, the intelligence is obtained. Now we are in this artificial intelligence era wherein uh, knowledge is being represented everywhere. Further, if this intelligence is further, it is processed. Intelligence once processed, we get wisdom. Still, we haven't reached that phase in computing. However, I would urge all the participants, the students over here to keep process, processing all the information that they seek. They always collect a lot of information, but they don't have time to process it. That's the reason I gave the three stories. If you do not process it well, they do not make much meaning out of it. And you can see here some of the screens here or some of the cartoons I can say 
the first one it says that finally we have a lawyer that only bills for 24 hours per day but actually he works for 24 hours that means the human beings are now slowly replaced by the robots and the second picture here shows that he has got everything ready rice is ready toast is ready so etc etc everything is ready so that means we would be living in such a world wherein we would be talking to more more machines than to human beings so for that sake we need to understand the world around us when we need to understand the world around us and operate with that we need to understand the basic concepts of artificial intelligence so that it makes our living more comfortable you can see this car these are some of the applications that i am going through now an autonomous car though not successful at this point of time but definitely will be in future because of the it's not because the technology has failed at this point of time that the autonomous cars can't be seen on the uh, roads it's because of the laws there are so many other things involved in there and that's the reason still the autonomous vehicles are on experiment you can see here that these robots are already there wherein they are going to provide some resources to help or helping the nurses in the hospitals to deliver stuff to different rooms yes of course this i believe most of you have experienced using the drones to record your cool videos for all of us on the outdoor activities so what is powering all of these it's the ai everywhere and i have a brief history of ai which uh, i would like you to go through and all this information is available on the internet thanks to all of those who post lots of information on the internet okay which of the following can be done at present by artificial intelligence can it play a game yes of course it can also win against any human at chess it can win the best humans at any other game it can play a game of tennis this is the uh, ai wherein it can power of ai i can say it can grab a particular cup and put it on to shelf however it can't unload the dishwasher in any home there are certain things that it can perform and still so many things that it can still not perform these are some of the things that ai can or may not perform it can't prove some of the theorem still and perform a surgical operation yes the robotic medicine is already tried and tested in us especially in the cancer treatments it's really doing well now what are the current ai projects available now you can see that the current ai projects are in robotics self driving voice assistants healthcare consumer electronics financial advisors these are the latest ai projects across most of the industries these days the applications of ai are in healthcare for assisting the doctors education for automating grading system autonomous vehicles for the advanced features travel industry for predicting the prices social media definitely you all have experienced that and you can also see that the recommendation system on all of these social media are quite active i believe you all have experienced using netflix to watch the movies which is a famous app when i watch one movie then you will have lot of recommendations for the other movie because it's learning your pattern the machine is learning your pattern and based on that it is suggesting what next you will wish to watch so also in any of the other uh, social medias you can see that in understanding this topics first we saw what just overview of what an artificial intelligence is and now what you understand by the term machine learning as we know traditionally programming means we give data 
and we give program and thus we get the output, right? That's the general traditional programming. However, in machine learning, what happens is the input is the data. And based on this input, this is given as, if you can see here, yes, the data and the output, required output is given as input and we generate the program over here. That's machine learning. And this is very important. We all have experienced this in most of the social media apps, which follows you whenever you spend some more time on any particular advertisement. And it's there that they get to know that you are interested in and more of such advertisements start, start flooding your Facebook wall. Yes, these are some of the uh, things that I said, human learning and machine learning, how are they different? Human learning is based on the problem is given as input, rule-based learning sometimes, LHS equals RHS, or maybe you know we use some of the bookshelves or maybe recall the memory, solve it, and then we get the output, maybe in terms of prediction or whatever, and we use that learning back again to the rule and use it and somehow it is slightly different from that what the machine is going to do. No doubt the origin is from the same place there. In case of machine learning, we provide it different types of data. We provide the test data, the past data, the testing data so that we get the outcome. We get some predictions which are quite useful. So having now seen what machine learning is, and also seen what AI is, we can further go now to understand what is fourth industrial revolution and how AI is boosting it. I Towards the end of my talk, I have got a very beautiful video which I would like to share and want each one of you to watch it carefully and listen to it as well. This is the modern house that we all would be in. We have every electronic device in this room. And you can see that each of the devices are talking to others. This is the modern house. Every device talks to every other device. So this person here claims that all the stuff can communicate with each other, but what does it say about us? Are they able to communicate with us? Are we able to connect with them? How are we going to communicate and so on? That's what our concern is for the future. Moving on to this industrial revolutions, we all are familiar with the industrial revolutions that we have seen in the past. We know that these industrial revolutions which began in the 17th century were focused more on the mechanization of manufacturing with the introduction of maybe the steam or the other industries. Later in the 18th century, it came up with the mass production of assembly lines wherein the electrical power uh, helped in creating the mass production. The third used the electronics and information technology in automating production. And now the fourth industrial revolution, which is just lying about the third one, that is the digital revolution. This has been occurring since the middle of the last century. And it is characterized by fusion of technologies that is blurring the lines between the physical, digital, and the biological spheres. Now, what are the different technologies or what are the building blocks of this industry? You can see that it could be autonomous robots, simulation, it could be industry, industrial internet of things, I, IOT. When I say IOT, it is nothing but it is internet of thing. That means anything that can be connected to the internet is called as internet of thing. Trust me, every device these days is an internet of thing. Everyone has got their own IP address except the human beings. We don't have IP address yet, but all of the other devices do have. The other uh, blocks are the cybersecurity, 
the additive manufacturing, that is the 3D printing, this is going to revolutionize the world now, customize everything. Most of the traditional industries definitely are going to shut down if this 3D printing comes into enforcement to a great extent. We also have now something called as the virtual reality, the augmented reality and so on. I believe most of you play games on the computer, definitely yes. And you all have experienced this augmented reality or virtual reality. Hope you have played many games. The big data analytics is yet another fuel that's going to build or force the 4.0 moving on to the industry fifth revolution. So what's this industry 4.0? When you say 4.0, it is revolutionizing the way we live in the internet, our environment, how we interact with each other and how we create a better place for all of us to be here. And as I say, it is revolutionizing and not evolving. It's not an evolution, but definitely a revolution here. So why we call it as a revolution, we can see slightly in later slides. And you can see that this is the report from the World Economic Forum from 2015. And if you see that they had predicted this for 2025, but maybe still we are in 2021 and all of these things are the facts now. We buy everything online. 80% will have the limited backup space in the cloud because we have cluttered it. There would be trillions of sensors on the internet connected to the internet for our day-to-day -day living. 80% of the world's population will have the internet presence. Then we have the first automobile entirely produced using 3D printer, which is on the way and so on and so forth. All of these, though they were supposed to be true till 2025, they're already there. That means they are going ahead of the expected time. That's the way in which the artificial intelligence is leaping into our life. Now, how different is this revolution from the previous industrial revolutions? You can see that the pace at which it is changing and the rate of introducing the new technology is unprecedented levels of impact on the society. It's having a greater impact here. You can see that, as I said, the digital, physical, and biological worlds are changing, creating novel opportunities and promises of the better future. Now, why do I say that the pace of change and the rate of introducing the new technology is very high? Let me give you a statistical evidence at this point. It took around 75 years for 100 million people to start using telephones, right? This was at this, uh, to start since telephone came into existence. However, if you recollect the game, Pokemon Go, yes. This game, what the number of users that this game introduced was just the same number in one month. We took 75 years for 100 million people while this game took just one month to have 100 million players. That's the pace at which it is working. The adoption of new technology is happening more rapidly than at any other time in the human history. That's the power of the technology that is influencing the fourth hey, industrial hey, revolution. Hey, it's create, it's, I'm just muting some of them, maybe by mistake, creating a more holistic and better connected ecosystem. And the focus of AI is now shifting from consumer applications to industrial application. Please note a point here that we all had artificial intelligence and its applications in consumer electronics or any of the applications. But since, since 
its focus is shifting from consumer to industrial application. This has resulted in revolution. Now, AI is the fourth industrial revolution. With that, we can say that AI is the fourth industrial revolution. It's going to transform our jobs and lives over for the next few years. AI's roots was in expert systems in 70s and 80s, but it's different now. What's different today and what is enabling the revolution? Of course, it's the machine learning, which is all around us. In what application it's around us, it can unlock your phone just with a glance or maybe with your finger touch. It's suggesting music that you would like to listen depending upon your mood. It is teaching cars to drive themselves. So this machine learning has made a huge difference to AI that it was in 70s and 80s to what it is today. Now, what is underpinning all of these, be it AI or machine learning, what's the food for it? It's the explosion of data. I hope you all agree that we have exploded or there is explosion of data. By 2020, the amount of data that every human being is creating is 1.7 megabytes of new information every second is being created. Believe me, it's so hard. Where do we store? And what if we do not make use of this natural resource? There will be 60 or 50 billion smart connected devices in the world, all developed to collect, analyze, and share the data. Hence, data is vital to AI and machine learning models, of course, need data as input. Just as we human beings learn our tacit knowledge through our experiences, and that's an experiential learning, and by attempting a task again and again, we gradually improve. So also is machine learning. We need the testing data and it also learns as we move. Data, we can say that is a new currency. Advancement in technology, what does that mean? Usage of internet or maybe the social media is a norm now. This being the norm, this itself generates so much huge data, maybe in more than petabytes of data is generated, but just by using a Google search. When you say a Google search, what data is generated? Lots of information like, you know, the GPS coordination or the click streams, the environment, et cetera, of the person who is searching, as well as the search history. Both of this constitutes huge data. Just in last two years, you can see that the world has produced 90% of the data that was never before. That means 2.5 quintillion bytes of data a day is generated. And this is the food for AI and driving the innovation at the moment. Applying machine learning on data, business can get better predictions regarding the user's interest and demands. That's really going to help growth and products and businesses. Personalization, customization is the new leap in the market. Now, where does this AI journey begin? What happens with it? First, it begins with understanding data around it. When I say understanding, it has to know where does data reside? How can we access the data? We need strong information architecture as a first step in the AI ladder. Followed by that, after having collected the data, it can be both in raw form, that is what we call it as unstructured data and maybe structured data, we'll have to convert it to so that we can use it better. When we convert it to structured data, that means in the form of tables, rows and columns, we try to fuse it together in order to allow the analytical tool to use this data to find better meaning out of it, better insights out of it. Identifying and un 
understanding the patterns that are hidden within the data and what is the trends of this, we can come up with the smart analytics. Now, further as we move on, the progress to AI and machine learning can gain further insight based on the past data, the testing data, it can predict the future performance. Let me give you an example over here. If you consider managing people in any society, the employee's interaction with the organization, that's the data. Businesses can fuse employee payroll data, absence records, training records, performance ratings, interactions with the fellow colleagues and so on. All this data can be generated. Managers can instantly visualize how people are performing based on using the analytical tool. And this focuses on further improvement. Once you know this, we can further use AI models to predict those employees who might need extra support or maybe some intervention so that their performance is hyped or maybe the high performers who are at the risk of living, we can care them more so that we can retain them in our own institute or maybe people showing early signs of declining performance, we can identify and do that. Trust me, we are using this technology here for our students learning, wherein we collect their data based, we have a Moodle platform wherein the students, every activity is recorded there. We know when, how much time they have taken, when did they view the assignment, when did they submit the assignment, every single data, how many times did a student download the lectures? Has he downloaded it close towards the exams or he has started downloading it before? So then we categorize the different types of learners based on their initial viewing. We categorize them as slow learners or you know, good moderate learners or you know, extremely high learners. Based on that, we provide them the information. Say for the slow learners, we provide lots of one-to-one -one consultation over Zoom, try to understand their difficulties, help them to move across. So that's how this analytical tool that we are using here is of great use. It gives us the complete statistics and helps us to intervene with the students who generally I do that for the slow learners, help them to visualize, to try to understand what difficulties they have, and then we move ahead. So with this, I can say that we are trying to have a, the customer centric environment. That is the customer centricity. Focus on the customer leads. Gen focus on the customer's requirement is going to lead us to satisfaction. Of course, retention and interaction of the customers and the consumers. Thus, enabling powerful analysis of the trends of their behavior over time will allow the organizations to track and forecast the future. How do you get data external to the organization? One is the social media. And what would be the other? There are plenty of digital platforms that they can collect the data. Suppose if you are visiting the Disney World, it's collecting the data based on the location from the wristbands to find out which game is attracting all of them more and which game is attracting less. Based on that, they can have some food and drink vouchers offers to the games where the attraction is less so that the crowd is distributed. This is how the data is being used. Apart from that, the infrared cameras are also being used in the movie theaters so that they can monitor the movements and the facial expressions of the people to determine engagement and the sentiment involved. Definitely we can use this to catch up the students engagement during our lecture. Unfortunately, all the cameras are off and we are unable to see our students face. Now, what are the different opportunities that we get from sharing the data? There are huge opportunities around the share around us and sharing this huge opportunity among various disciplines will definitely help. If government, health, 
polis, all of them share the data that they have. It's really, really helpful to you know, detect a lot of things, to avoid a lot of crimes and so on. However, the challenges that we are facing at this point is the privacy, the data, data protection and the growing public concern. However, still if we keep within the framework, if we try to share, it will help us to predict the future when and where the crime is likely to happen so that the police force is focusing there. Are there any risk or vulnerability of any individual can also be predicted. The machine learning algorithms can also be employed in variety of ways to automate the facial recognition, to learn, to pinpoint crime hotspots, and also to identify which people are more likely to re-offend and so on. When we say blurring physical, digital, and biological spheres, it's because of the fourth industrial revolution velocity at which it is moving. The way it is evolving exponential, it's not moving in a linear space. And the scope of it is that it is disrupting almost all industry and in almost every country. And what is its impact? It can herald the transformation of entire system of production, management, and even the governance. That's the change that this fourth industrial revolution is bringing to us. And that's because of the technology breakthrough that's connecting the people, all of us in a better way. You can see that there is possibilities of billions of people who are connected to the mobile device. And this number is unlimited. And you can see every mobile device has got huge processing power, huge storage of data with the virtual memory coming into picture. We are not aware whether the data that we store is on our handle device or in the cloud. There's plenty of, or I can say infinite memory available to us now. And all of these pos possibilities multiplied with the emerging technologies such as robotics, IOTs, autonomous vehicles, 3D printing, nanobiotechnology, material science, energy storage, quantum computing. Please remember students, the future of computing is in quantum computing. That's another interesting area. And if you have to leap ahead in life, definitely try to understand what quantum computing is. With all this, you can see the role of AI in current society. Oh, it's, it's massive. If you try to log into Watson's lab, you can see what great things they are achieving now. They are trying to replace the lawyers at the legal work. And if there's a link that I have provided here, I'm not sure if I'll be able to share that as well since I did not share the screen. Yes. Are you able to see the screen here? Uh, yes, ma'am. We are able to see the screen. Okay. You can see that this AI has outperformed 20 corporate lawyers at the legal work. That's really amazing. The rate of automation is too good. You can see that in 2018, 22, and 25, this is how the division of labor is happening. One last thing that here I can show you, the accuracy level with AI in cases, it, it, they show that AI achieved an accuracy level of 94% compared to the average accuracy level of 85% across 20 human lawyers. That's how they are competing with us now. Just go back to my presentations. Many of the other fields other than this law, uh, if you have heard of robotic medicine, wherein the finest of the finest surgery works are now happening by the use of robots, especially in cancer treatments in US, they are into practice now. That's where we all have to think, are we totally being substituted or are we going to be supplementing or how we are going to use? So for that, the old proverb, survival of the fittest should be changed now to survival of the fastest. So dear students, I, could, I can say that 
you have got plenty of opportunities you have everything around you and if you invest your time appropriately definitely you can fight out and see that you can really do well in this technological era with all of these technological advancements you can see that there are challenges as well as opportunities now fourth industrial revolution has got greater potential to raise the global income levels and also improve the quality of life for populations around the world now who all can be benefited of course those who can access the digital world how with the help of technology and at your fingertips you can order a cab book a flight buy a product do all those things that we have never done before so easily that's how the technology is leaping ahead the technology innovation will also lead to the supply side and the demand side of the industry you can see that in future the transportation of course the communication costs are going to drop further the logistics the global supply chains are going to be affected they will be more effective the cost of trade will definitely diminish and we all are now witnessing that because we are using amazon for shopping the remote controlled production will definitely help us to improve on the logistics however it's not only on the supply side but also on the demand side it's definitely revolutionizing and yielding lot of benefits at the same time it's also creating inequality and its potential to disrupt the labor markets as well the automation is substituting the labors across the entire economy so far and the net displacement of the workers by the machines will have its own gap it's going to widen the gap or we could say that it is going to encourage only those who are educated and who are smart using the technology others will remain back in the race that's sad to say but that's the truth and with this you can see that the demand for highly skilled workers is going to increase and the demand for workers with less education i can add here with less digital education and low skills will or may decrease in the near future yeah with more impact on the businesses on the supply side many industries are now seeing that these new technologies will create entirely new ways of serving the existing needs and you can see that the existing businesses are now taking a new form there is a change there is a morphology in the business or the way it is being conducted there are going to be major shifts on the demand side along with the supply side because the growing transparency the consumer engagement and new patterns of consumer behavior all of them are forcing all the companies to adapt to the new design to the market as well as to deliver new products and services to all of us definitely we are creating new platforms for all the old business and never before as i said we had done the business in the way that we are doing now and this new platform are rapidly multiplying into new services there are no more business platform everything is now into services maybe even you know arranging from laundry to shopping everything is done now over your fingertips and the power lies in your mobile device i can just summarize that the impact of businesses what are the four main effects that this fourth industrial revolution is doing on business that's on the consumer expectations product enhancement collaborative innovation and on the organizational forms customers are the epicenter of the economy be it in education or be it in commerce or trade everywhere customers are centric the shift from simple digitization to innovation based on the technologies that i have mentioned now before and it's forcing all the industries 
or the companies to re-examine the way they are doing and how best they can adapt to the new world, new technological world. Business leaders or maybe the senior executives, they all need to understand the changing environment, need to adapt and then work with the changing innovations. As we go and as we see here, the new technologies and platforms will increase or will in, uh, enable the citizens to engage with governments. There's a transparency being created now. The public can view the performance of the government transparently. They can voice their opinions, coordinate their efforts, and even circumvent the supervision of the public authorities. And also at the same time, the government can also gain new technological paths to increase their control over populations based on the surveillance systems and the ability to control the digital infrastructure. That's going to be mutual and that's what we have to pay attention. At the same time, we should be taking care of the national and the international security aspects and we have got very few or maybe you know sometimes more vulnerabilities that will lead to the new fears at the same time the advancement in the technologies will create potential to reduce the scale of impact of violence that's what we wish and pray for through the development of new modes of protection maybe with greater precision and greater uh, advancement in the technology. Of course, agile governance is only going to survive in the future. Definitely, it has impacted all of our life. I'm just rushing now because I believe uh, the time given to me is almost done. I'm going to leave the slides with you in case if it is useful, but definitely I can share this much more ocean of knowledge around you. And I would like you all to please use that internet connectivity or whatever uh, bandwidth you have to the best uh, to the best usage of your available time time is your money now and one last slides here this is the skill the soft skill that each one of us have to be prepared for the future jobs the workforce readiness in a different way the soft skills are just not enough the technical skills are a must doesn't mean that I'm a non-technical student or you are a technical student. Everyone is a digital citizen over here and we all need to update ourselves. Check yourself on the following aspects. What are the world's most advanced manufacturing sites? What are the examples of four IR technologies widely that are used today? What are the structures and processes successfully supporting the adoption and diffusion of 4IR technology? And these are some of the references that I have used to prepare the contents. As I said, I had a video for you to show. However, I'll pass it on to Imran sir so that he can play to all of you when required. But definitely please watch that every word in that video definitely will help you to understand better what the world is around us. If we do not see, then definitely we are going to fail. Or maybe I can say that we will not be prepared for the next era. And you be the digital, uh, I can say that we were all migrants, but you are the native citizens of the digital era and you have to be really, really getting into it, okay? Thanks, all of you. Thanks for your patient hearing. I'm sorry, I just moved beyond my allotted time by eight minutes. Thank you. If okay. you have any questions, you. keep them with all Imran, sir. I'll be happy to answer them offline and pave way for the next speaker. Thank you. Sure, ma'am. Thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you so much. And, uh, 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 you know, you what you said, it is uh, exactly, uh, you know, right. It's 100% correct that, uh, you know, uh, you uh, 
are a generation who migrated to technology you migrated to the digital world but uh, we as a younger generation and the present uh, gen x uh, you know students they are born into this digital world uh, so uh, what you said is rightly correct uh, so they have much more predominant opportunity in establishing their identity through this digital world thank you so much ma'am thank you so much uh, so i'll let the audience uh, let the attendees wrap their head around uh, your talk and we'll wait if we have any questions so we can take them uh, after the uh, second technical session definitely sir definitely so thank you, uh, sir. Uh, um, so uh, thank you Thank you, thank you so much, ma'am. So, uh, on behalf of everyone, I just want to, uh, you know, uh, convey my huge thanks to you for highlighting the intricacies of artificial intelligence and the significance of it in the uh, coming days. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, so, moving on to the uh, second technical session, I uh, now call upon Ms. Kusuma Kamble uh, to introduce uh, the uh, speaker of the uh, second session. Over to you. Good afternoon, everyone. Myself, Kusma Kamde, studying in Become Six M, Kaili Society, Sri Shiva Yogi Murugendra Swamiji College, Arts, Science, Commerce, Athani, IQAC Institute One Day International Webinar on Artificial Intelligence, organized by Department of Commerce. It gives me an immense pleasure to introduce resource person of the webinar, Dr. A. M. Guru Sir. Dr. A. M. Guru Sir have a very rich profile. Sir was born on 26 July 1965. Sir completed two MCOM, one MPhil, GDC and A, NET, ICWAI, PZDCA, MBA, MSW, ADR, two PhDs, two deletes from foreign universities. Sir has master in four languages. Sir has completed 11 minor projects, three major completed one is ongoing sir is a research guide under his guidance 8 mpil 17 phd awarded sir has 33 years teaching experience in various fields sir is phd and mpil research work research work for more than seven universities. Sir has more than 5,000 training programs have been conducted for marketing and industrial employees in Kolhapur and outside Kolhapur on various subjects. Sir has published eight books as a single author and 21 books as a co-author. Sir has presented national and international seminars, 197 papers published in referred and non-referred journals with ISBN. Sir has more than 460 papers presented in conference, seminar, and workshop. Sir has attended more than 2,000 contributions as a resource person in conference, seminar, etc. Sir has been honored with many awards. Sir is BOS of more than 30 institutes and universities. Presently, Sir has working in former principal and fellow of Indian Commerce Association, professor and former head of department commerce and management, dean facility of commerce and management, coordinator center for skill and entrepreneurship development, coordinator MBA Ashwan Prav Chavan School of Rural Management, Sir is a professor in the Department of Commerce and Management, Shivaji University, Kolhapur. The words are not enough to say about Sir. Sir is a great resource person. With these few words of introduce of today's resource person by Dr. A. M. Guru, Sir. Thank you, one and all. Uh, thank you, Kusuma. Thank you so much. Uh, so, uh, without much further ado, I now humbly request uh, Professor A. M. Guru, Sir, to please address the virtual gathering. Over to you, Sir. Thank you, sir. And uh, please allow me to share my slides. Yes, sir. Please go ahead. Check whether the slide is visible. Uh, so no, sir. Not yet, sir. No, yet, uh, some problem is there. I hope so. Sir, you can share it. Sir, try to share the screen now. No, I tried, sir.
just a minute yes sir yeah sir uh, i think we'll wait for a few seconds so i think it might take some time to um, you know share it on our screens or uh, sir email it to imran sir he can play yeah. and you can that, yeah. that would be easier. ಇಬ್ರನ್ ಸರ್ ಬೇಡ ಇನ್ನೊಂದು ಸರ್ ಮೊಬೈಲಲ್ಲಿ ಮಾಡ್ತಿದ್ದಾರೆ ಸರ್ ಇಫ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಚಾಟ್ ಬಾಕ್ಸ್ ಐ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ गिवन ಯು ಮೈ ಇಮೇಲ್ ಐಡಿ ಇಫ್ ಯು ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಕ್ವಿಕ್ಲಿ ಜಸ್ಟ್ ಮೇಲ್ ಮೀ ಯುವರ್ ಪ್ರೆಸೆಂಟೇಷನ್ ಮೇಬಿ ಐ ವಿಲ್ ಶೇರ್ ದ ಸ್ಕ್ರೀನ್ ಇಟ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ಹಿಯರ್ Uh, professor guru sir mula sir imran mula sir oh yes sir yes sir uh, have you given the mail id like uh, have you shared the mail id uh, ah yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah i have posted in the yeah i have shared my but i'm really sorry your bandwidth is fluctuating um okay my okay. sir can you uh, can you post another mail id uh, like i can open it here and i can share it from my side okay has a uh, professor guru uh, okay uh, sangne sir yes sir sir i think uh, gurav sir uh, he has left the meeting uh, due to some technical issues okay 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 um shall we wait for a minute or yeah yeah i think we'll wait for a uh, for a minute i think yes sir uh, trying to solve the um, you know this issue of sharing the screen i'll try to get in contact with him yeah yeah please, 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 please thank you so much thank you okay uh, in a meanwhile if uh, you know uh, okay uh, i think uh, yeah uh, i think uh, aman sir are you here uh yes i'm here uh, so uh, if you're ready with your, i'm just i'm sorry for throwing you uh, you know uh, sir we don't want to spot light so yeah yes sir mr sir. sir just give me a minute uh, gurup sir has just joined now uh we'll try one okay, more time okay 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 gurav sir i uh, have just uh, made you a co-host please try to share your screen now gurav sir uh, you are you have muted your mic please unmute yourself and you can share the screen yes sir it's oh, yeah. okay yeah but the pro, uh, but the but the mic is off sir please switch on your mic put on your mic sorry yeah, sir he, he, yeah okay okay yeah 
artificial intelligence and issues in artificial intelligence because daily i used to speak more than 3 to 4 sessions online but although there are some technical issues uh very nice introduction made by concerned student respected patron of the institute respected principal sir respected first technical speaker dr nandini madam all teachers friends and dear students i am going to contribute on impact on artificial intelligence on e-commerce already you have discussed about the what exactly artificial intelligence and in this fourth generation of industrial revolution i am going to focus on this artificial intelligence and e-commerce in a present scenario the outline of my presentation will be in a precise way i will highlight what exactly ai as well as e-commerce and e-businesses then i'm going to touch about the artificial intelligence and the e-commerce it's a relationship i'm very thankful to the first speaker she has highlighted good number of examples and this artificial intelligence is definitely going to rule the economy not only the economy but all of us along with the stories and conclusion i will try my level best to put before you in 30 45 minutes artificial intelligence abbreviated as ai it is the replication of human intelligence in machines and when we are making a replication of our intelligence our pattern learning pattern our habits our approaches and this artificial intelligence is playing dominant role in e-commerce it is a computerized program based intelligence and madam has already spoke about it it is a learning and problem solving simulation of human mind by machine i am doubtful whether i able to show the clip check it whether it is visible wale patan yakeen hi kyun kar hoga tujhe is the film is visible yakeen hi hoga iski rachna itni sundar ho kitna sun whether it was seen by you no sir actually the clip was not playing oh sorry sir sorry i think uh, 
we can play it a little later if possible if time permits okay okay okay, okay if time permits we will do that yes sir thank you sorry for that okay sorry in artificial intelligence madam has already highlighted about the machine learning when we are talk about the e commerce e businesses intelligent questions emotional questions social questions as well as adversity questions is nothing but iq eq sq and aq its a combination is there in artificial intelligence by way of machine and when we are using this iq eq sq and aq to support the e-commerce activities commercial activities the earlier speaker already made a statement here after one device will start speaking dialoging with other devices by way of artificial intelligence and if this artificial intelligence we are going to use in a effective way in a more proportion in e-commerce then there will be a paradigm shift in this 21st century from one machine to another machine from one devices to another devices the goods and services will be exchanged from one another we are aware about it commerce is the backbone of business transactions business activities when buying and selling goods and services are taken place this ai definitely useful for different reasons and different purposes maybe for purchasing the services including the selling the services maybe purchasing the equipments devices tools at home front level as well as at industrial level along with the medical is going to contribute in coming future the earlier system was production after demand but if you refer the present scenario production is before demand and when production is before demand artificial intelligence is playing a dominant role vital role significant role for attracting the customers and through the artificial intelligence sorry sir i don't know what is the problem today it's sorry sir you can share it. completely yes sir gurav sir there is a small suggestion Haan, if sir. you can switch off your video uh, you the audio will be more clear okay i'm while using a, while presenting band. you can switch off your video okay i'm using the broadband there is no problem but okay okay i'll switch off my video yes sir
there is a connectivity problem i hope so because machine is taking too much time yes sir you can share the screen now okay okay i will do it i will do it machine is slowed down laptop is slowed down just one minute fine fine sir fine sir. Uh, Gurav sir, am I audible? Yeah, I think. Uh, oh, again. Um, uh, I think uh, there's some uh, uh, <laughs> issue with his, uh, you know, connectivity. Yes. Uh, so, uh, Sagmi sir, uh, we'll. I think we'll move ahead with the uh, paper presenters. We'll start yes, with uh, Aman. Uh, meanwhile, yes, you can just contact him, and you can say that uh, we'll, uh, you know, uh, we'll begin his presentation after uh, you know, the paper present. I, I, think I, I that just get in be... touch with him. You please continue, sir. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, okay. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Uh, so, uh, uh, sorry for all the technical glitches uh, that has been happening. Okay. Uh, so we'll uh, we'll look at uh, you know Gross's presentation, um, you know, after a few minutes. But I think we should. Face time, and uh, you know, uh, we'll have some few paper presentations, and we do have an excellent line uh, of uh, you know a lineup of uh, paper presenters. So, without much further ado, I I, I think I can now uh, you know request uh, you know Mr. Aman to please present his paper. Over to you, Aman. Thank you very much. Okay, let me share my screen. Mm -hmm. Sir, I'm uh, switching my. Please, please may make me host. Okay. <laughs> okay, you want to start someone's presentation? Yes, sir. We'll we'll uh, first. I think uh, you know uh, because you had some technical uh, you know connectivity issue. So okay. uh, we started with Aman. So okay. soon after Aman's presentation, will no, no problem, no no problem, no problem. Extremely sorry, sir. No, no, no not not necessary. It is technical issue from my end. Uh, yes, sir. We'll, soon after uh, Aman's presentation, we'll yes, continue yes, with yes, your yes. presentation. Go ahead. Thank go you ahead, so much. Thank you so much. Yeah, yeah. Please, Aman. Please uh, continue. Okay. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much to the uh, KLE. Society for uh, providing me this opportunity for sharing my idea and then uh, my research. And thank you, for, uh, my research partners, for make, uh, making this uh, happening and then cooperating with me on this ongoing research. And thank you, uh, Nandani ma'am, uh, for guiding us in uh, and providing such insightful knowledge on uh, these uh, research areas. And uh, now, with uh, the further ado, I would like to begin my presentation. Uh, so my presentation is basically uh, with a recommendation in a system. So recommendation system is a part of artificial intelligence that we are uh, discussing. And um, okay, what is recommendation engine? So uh, recommendation engine is a system that can deliver personalized recommendations based on the user's needs from the wide space of possible options. So wide space of possible options means uh, you have like, when you buy a cloth, you might have the options of different brands. So uh, with the, like, if your friends are buying the uh, brand, uh, so with certain brand, then it can recommend you that brand to you as well. So uh, according to your pattern. So the personalization is achieved through a data collection. So how, how that personalization is achieved is from the data collection. For example, you uh, sign up for the eBay and search for the clothes. 
and then you go to the Google and then you see the ad for the clothes. So you say like, uh, what is happening? How is it possible? I have clothes on my mind and then I have sourced from the eBay, but it's showing on the Google ad. So how is it possible? So it's different APIs working together. And uh, when you sign up for the eBay as well, you provide a Gmail. So from there, the Google is collecting the data and then they are using it for their customized recommendations. And the data process, so the data process through the machine learning models, we will be discussing on the machine learning models that we have used on uh, our uh, research. And machine learning models perform clustering, classification, and filtering of the data that are collected uh, from the uh, internet. Um, so, so why recommendation system is needed? So obviously recommendation is uh, system is needed to reduce cost for finding and selecting items, simply save time and helping decision making for uh, every uh, prospect. So generally speaking, the need is very extensive than you uh, think. So back in 2006, when we, uh, uh, Nandini ma'am mentioned about the Netflix using the recommendation system. So back in uh, 2006, Netflix offered 1 million uh, dollar price if we can improve their recommendation engine just by 10%. So this can, like we can see how important is it for a certain business to improve a recommendation uh, engine. And in 2009, the team called Balcorp's Pragmatic Chaos won that price by increasing performance just by 10.6%. So 10.6% they won a million dollar price. So I think I have attracted everyone's attention now, mentioning the price and the million dollar business. So you can see how um, how necessity uh, has grown for the recommendation engine for certain businesses in coming days. So moreover, researchers believe that recommendation engine for an online processing system like Amazon eBay lead to between 10 to 25 percent of increased revenue in day-to-day -day, uh, business. So these example I discuss reflects the need and put importance of recommendation engines. Um, so next slide. So we're talking about the application. Some of the application was mentioned by our first speaker and we uh, to add on that one. So uh, some of other application is on cybersecurity domain, business domain, medical domain, and crime detection domain. So. For the cybersecurity domain, we, uh, the, uh, in cybersecurity, we can use recommendation system in line with the intrusion detection system and for, rec uh, for recommending the solution for the identified problem. So problem may be maybe the viruses coming in. So what the intru intrusion detection system, uh, what is intrusion detection system? Simply we can say like the data that transfer in the internet is uh, uh, transfer in the packet. So a packet can be represented as a train. So a train has a different compartments. So also the packet has a different compartments. So that compartments has a different uh, frames attached together. So when uh, that, uh, for example, uh, in one con compartment, uh, there is a, in train, there is a bomb. Let's say we suspect a bomb. So that can be a virus in terms of intrusion detection system. So we saw, we have to quarantine that compartment, detach the compartment, quarantine it, attach it, and then send the uh, send other uh, uh, train compartments. Uh, so after we quarantine that compartment, then we can analyze if that is bomb or not. So that's a general logic with uh, really, with relation to the train and the packets, how the intrusion detection system works in the cybersecurity. And for uh, like when that uh, threat is detected. The recommendation engine can recommend the solution that for that identified threat. It can analyze the, for example, I take the train compartment. It can analyze the type of bomb and then it can recommend. Okay, this person has done this before. You call this to defuse this. Okay, so it can be uh, like solved and then we can begin our regular life. So uh, similar can, thing can happen with the IDS intrusion detection system. So another is businesses. I have already mentioned about Netflix and Amazon about this one and the medical. In the medical system, uh, medical is like a focus in this COVID-19 situation. And then it has been uh, proven like uh, to be uh, very effective in uh, biomedical research on uh, cancer detection and many more. 
and for uh, and also it can be used on crime detection. So crime detection can uh, like for example, um, you have a, a certain pattern of the crime going on there, and then um, when you uh, like uh, put an input for that pattern, you have a criminal database, and then you can recognize and you can shortlist those criminal on that pattern, and then you can like uh, focus on one uh, one sort of one group. So it will help in crime detection as well. So these are some of the important application of uh, this system. And other application can be education as well. That uh, has been already discussed by the Nandani ma'am as well. And our projects also revolve around the academics. So uh, let me move. So technology used in recommendation engine. So currently, current. I'm just mentioning here the current technologies. So right now, so every uh, databases has shifted from uh, relational databases to the graph databases. So the difference between relational databases and graph databases is that in relational databases, we have a tables and tables has uh, certain IDs, which is re represented as uh, primary key, which is, and then foreign, foreign key uh, connect two tables and then so on. So, but in graph databases, we have different nodes. So two nodes are uh, just connected by a, uh, a relation and uh, it is very easy to find the pat uh, to do the pattern detection from the uh, graph databases then the relational databases because relational databases has we have to go through uh, relating different uh, foreign keys and then finding those patterns so it would it is it might be possible it is but it's very time consuming and may, many scientists don't want to do that so don't invest i don't want to invest those times so a graph databases is on current in our current situation it is important for the recommendation systems so two main approaches uh, are uh, so these are the general approaches so content based filtering and the collaborative filtering so what content based filtering does is content content based filtering takes the metadata from your uh, user profile the metadata can be your interest uh, whatever you have uh, filled in the form in your profile and then it recommends you based on that uh, metadata. So, uh, but with the collaborative filtering, you have rated some uh, movies, then another has rated the movies, and based on that rating, uh, it will uh, compute and then recommend it to the other users. So, those are the two approaches basically we use. This is the graphical representation of data. So, when we go near here, so you can see these are the nodes. This is called the nodes, and these are the relationship. And uh, so two nodes are connected by one relationship, and then relationship can be defined in triples. Triples means one uh, can uh, relate to uh, three. Uh, one has one node has the three relationships, and that can come around. And this is uh, very easy to um, like um, uh, dictate some patterns with this one. So let me off. And uh, for our project, we focus on like uh, collecting uh, the data, uh, the, these data, and then uh, we will be um, we will be connecting it to certain field and area, so that a person, if a person wants some collaborators, then they can uh, actually uh, the machine can recommend the. Uh, uh, appropriate collaborators for their research with uh, technical skills. And uh, some like uh, nowadays, I would say rather than the technical skills, some into like uh, some interest. So if you have interest, you can do everything uh, in uh, today's computing world, because if you want to learn the programming, you can just reference some documentation uh, related to that programming. You just have to know what is uh, the principal uh, pattern of that one and you can reference the document related to that then uh, you, we can so here uh, the new FOSE we have used the new FOSE uh, uh, database which is a graph database and its utilization of its uh, this one is booming and then this is a good source uh, this is a uh, good we think that this is a good implementation uh, based on our uh, background research and then so as we can see here uh, uh, the uh, it uh, finds the relations 
um, um, and represents the graphical representation is uh, pretty much clear. And then when you go here, this is a cipher query language. So in which we are matching uh, biology. So the people who are related to biology were matching here. So when we go match the people who are related to the biology, we can find some sort of like uh, name of the people. And then this is represented in the graph. So this is how the new FOSE, the graph databases we are using uh, works. And then let me just, uh, okay, okay. And so I have discussed about the graph database and we have uh, discussed about the, uh, our, what we have implemented so far in our research project. So, and then remember, so one thing is remember, it doesn't matter where the data comes from. For algorithm data, data is data. It is our responsibility to link to provide it to appropriate meaning. What that, that, that means? So, so how can, like I have shown here a robot. So this has an, uh, so how can we make this one intelligent? So in many robotics, they use semantic, um, uh, semantic uh, technology to make it intelligent enough. So what does semantic technology uh, does is uh, it uh, uh, connects the meaning, meaningful, uh, it connects the um, uh, idea, uh, it connects the relationship uh, and meanings to the internet. Like if we, uh, like the, when the database, or uh, in uh, when I describe in a technical form, when we have uh, like data in our database, then that database, some of the uh, details in the database are represented as RDF. So what is RDF? Uh, I think we can uh, reference that to the, like uh, you, you can search about that in the internet, what is RDF? And it is represented as RDF and then mapping is done based on that RDF. What which uh, which in which department does that actual text belong to? So that's how the semantics technology works. So to make a machine capable of understanding uh, the data, the semantic web uh, was created. The creation of the semantic uh, web as well. So it uses NLP, natural processing language, Spark QL, uh, to fetch the data from RDS resource description framework. This technique might offer more precise result for complex problem. I have already discussed about the uh, biomedical implementation. Most of the biomedical implementation implement this semantic technology uh, to uh, acquire their uh, uh, knowledge, to acquire their uh, results. So it will be useful in situation when less memory is necessary to construct a system because everything is happening in within the website, within the www. So everything is happening within it. So it has a less memory con uh, consumption. So uh, let me focus on our uh, project. So goal here, so goal of our project is, this project focus on conducting historical research and finding the technology used in similar project, identify the tools not used yet and apply it to the system and check the performance parameter. So, uh, so identify the tools not used yet, what this means is the similar project, like we are uh, to introduce our project, uh, we are matching a researcher to the another researcher who have a similar interest and they want to collaborate with each other. So it will help uh, to foster the collaboration among the researchers and help to uh, to like build the help to build the technology and then build this world up whole world a uh, uh, better place. So many, uh, there are not many, but certain number of uh, similar projects uh, have been identified with our research. And then uh, uh, we have identified the tools that are used in those research as well. And then we uh, just um, left that tools. And then we have identified the tools that are not yet used because in uh, NeoFose is a new graph database which is popular in uh, becoming popular nowadays and then uh, among different uh, data uh, science uh, personnel. So the success of the project will help the researcher for 
decision making in choosing the collaborator and funding institution with more precise result. So uh, the precision uh, parameter will be uh, uh, like uh, calculated after the successful implementation of this project. So this is basically the whole paper about the uh, 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 research um, or the, uh, research for proposal. So it's currently we are more focusing uh, more and more researching. This is on and continual process. So if the research become on, so if our research become unsuccessful, okay, so we haven't achieved that performance parameter, then it will help the researcher to further mathematically deduce the problem and analyze problem in this technology with respect to the domain of the project. So what is the domain of our project is finding collaborators among the research groups. So uh, mathematical de deduction means every data science problem is derived from mathematics and majorly from statistics. So every uh, machine learning is based on statistics. So if you are currently, uh, like if you want to further develop your uh, data skills and learn machine learnings, then you have to have a good knowledge and statistics, then you can mathematically deduce those uh, problems and then see the precision and uh, see the precision of how precise is your system is. So, so problem overview. So this is our research program overview. So focus on focuses on solving the problem of finding the potential collaborators for the academic researchers and factor like geographical distance, te uh, temporal distance, perceived distance, affect the virtual team. Virtual team means like uh, we are uh, here as a team called a team talking to an um, conference. So this is uh, represented as like a virtual team. So, and this is a holistic view of the system that we have proposed. And then in which the client, client is a researcher, researcher professionals, and it can be a student, uh, goes to the user interface and search for the result, and then uh, it also provides the recommendation. So query goes through the API. API is like um, application, uh, like it works as a middleman between uh, the uh, actual engine and the user interface. Same uh, with the database external source means uh, we have a Google API, for example. We have if we want to get a data from the uh, Google API, then we can get it to the uh, uh, we can get it to the uh, uh, recommendation engine, and then we can go from there. So this is a further view of our uh, recommendation engine. So new semantics is uh, is um, extension that is applied to the new data dataset for the implementation of semantics within the new data dataset, and then it will expose those data that we have collected from the user interface as an RDF, and then we will define the mapping. So mapping can be to the uh, schema.org. Is, uh, it, it's a public ontology that provide, that we can map our data to, to give and data the meaning it requires. For example, we have a phrase called I love you. So in I love you is a phrase of expression of love in English. But when we are go to the when we go to the cybersecurity domain, it's a virus. So how the computer can understand those uh, domain is like the, that phrase belongs to the virus, or that phrase belongs to the some kind of English uh, uh, expression. It will be defined as a mapping to that uh, to that uh, domain of uh, uh, ontology and is command. And then it, the content filtering will be done and then recommendation content will be shown in the uh, uh, screen of the users. So with the user interface, this is the learning curve. So these are the languages used for the uh, user interfaces. So it is HTML, CSS, Bootstrap, Framework, jQuery, and JavaScript will be used in the user interface. So, and in the backend, Django framework. So those are essential. The UI that I have shown before is essential for uh, the Django framework to work. And then we will be using Python, NeoFose, and Py2 Neo REST, REST API uh, uh, in this one. So, um, 
Okay, so uh, to wrap up, uh, so this is our overall system. So, and then uh, we will be using hybrid filtering. Hybrid filtering is just uh, some, um, uh, hybrid filtering is uh, the combination of collaborative and um, combination of collaborative and content-based filtering. And we'll be using uh, KNN clustering. KNN clustering means uh, like uh, collecting the group, uh, which is related to same domain and same interest. The performance matrix is uh, precision recall and F1 square. Again, this is an statistical problem. Uh, I, that's why how the importance of statistics is in uh, the machine learning. And then future work is use the system. You use the AWS Amazon Web Service, which is booming right now, and use of the neural networks and test the system uh, with this. With this, I want to uh, thank you for giving me this opportunity. And I'm sorry for uh, like a bit of explanation. And uh, thank you very much. These are the references that I have, I have used uh, for my uh, research. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much, Aman. Thank you so much. So it's just because of the time constraint that uh, we are rushing into this. Uh, so I think we'll, uh, you know, uh, we'll go back to uh, Professor Grosser and see if he's able to um, share his screen and continue with his presentation. Uh, Professor Grosser. Uh, uh, yeah. Yes. Okay, great, sir. Thank you so much, sir. And I'm once again, I'm sorry, sir. Uh, sorry. No. <laughs> okay. uh, yeah, yeah, please continue, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you. Sorry from my end, because today the internet is not supporting me. Okay. Although it is a artificial intelligence, lot of problems and issues are there. Uh, a minute only. I'm going for slide share mode. Okay, friends. We are talking about something is wrong again. Okay? We are talking about artificial intelligence and e-commerce. In this LPG scenario, marketing of services as well as the marketing of products are very, very challenging. And under such circumstances, the artificial intelligence is vital because in e-commerce, e-businesses, the industry, trade, commerce using the computer networking is called as e-commerce. And in this computer networking, for enhancing of the e-commerce, any commercial transactions, trading related transactions, networking transactions, development of the industries, including the fourth revolution of industries, the artificial intelligence is very, very significant as well as very vital. In electronic businesses, there are four seeds. If you refer any one of the seeds, that is confidence. Whether I'm audible? Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Please go ahead. Okay. Because I'm worried about when the connectivity uh, goes off. Uh, yes, sir. Please go ahead, sir. There are four seeds in electronic businesses, electronic commerce the confidence, connectivity, committed activities, and courage. When we are talking about AI, machine learning, and just presenter presentation we referred, the connectivity is a vital part in electronic businesses. Businesses on the basis of online. How we are going to commit for online businesses, online business transactions, and in this online business transactions, this artificial intelligence supports 
स्मार्ट असिस्टेंस आर्टिफिशियल इंटेलिजेंस रेकग्नाइज द पैटर्न ऑफ द कस्टमर्स फॉर एग्जाम्पल एज ए कस्टमर वुड बी कस्टमर प्रोबेबल कस्टमर if i am standing outside the shop of ready made garment of xyz company that company immediately recognized me and started sending messages to me and it is possible because of artificial intelligence in the year 1996 the e businesses electronic businesses have been introduced then in 1970 electronic data in then in 80 atms in 1990 dot coms in 2000 world wide web in 20 whether this covid 19 has adversely affected all businesses on the work of artificial intelligence and really boosted to e-commerce and in 2021 good amount of use of artificial intelligence for all sectors including the e-commerce and e-businesses if a businessman if we all are really interested to become a successful person to becoming a successful person the use of artificial intelligence is very essential very much useful for survival and growth if you refer the paradigm shift in 21st century the electronic businesses customer relationship management erp dms hrd and hrm content management system emails voicemail and number of things web conferencing business process management these all activities these all things become very easy because of artificial intelligence not only that for electronic commerce for electronic businesses in the area of recruitment payment compliance settlements negotiations inquiries and logistic management take it an example of amazon how the structure is of e-commerce customers are placing the order through the website the order has get processed communicated to the organizer organizer take the help of logistic and supplying the concerned goods to the respective customer this process is found in e-commerce my dear participants we are aware about the mckinsey 7s model for e-commerce skill staff strategies style shared values structure and system i developed one eighth yes that is stability and stability in the e-commerce era in the skill era in the present era or in simple 21st century the artificial intelligence playing a significant role in artificial intelligence the use of devices at household in the business world for construction business 
for manufacturing for education for financial services for business processes including the cyber security it means that in all part of walks of our life every day artificial intelligence playing significant role and for that sustainability in e-commerce artificial intelligence is very very essential in electronic commerce online transactions are there physical visits are less sky commerce is there exchange of data from different companies among the companies is possible with the help of artificial intelligence and number of companies number of organizations number of institutions have been using not only that i had been to one of the pan shop at aurangabad and the shopkeeper is exporting the pans prepared pan worth rupees 5000 per piece and he is using the artificial intelligence the facial expression habits of the customers the mentality of the customers who are purchasing in a bulk quantity the processing of e-commerce everywhere in every field in electronic commerce electronic businesses artificial intelligence playing a dominant role in electronic commerce internet intranet data warehousing electronic payment customers relationship management you take it an example in india good number of departmental stores have been working and these departmental stores have been managing have been using emphasizing on crm with the help of ai for supply chain management artificial intelligence is useful not only that for home security security of the places let us have a story a boy born in 12th july 1961 at new york new mexico usa mother and son thrown out from the by the father at that time the age of the mother was 17 and the age of the son was 3 years only mother got married with another fellow this boy this son has started doing some computer related activities studied in 1986 up to bsc in 86 he accepted the job at new york started career in finance after graduation for 16 years he have been running a company the idea came in his mind why not to start online delivery company got married resigned his job he started a book selling company in 1986 actually commencement in 1986 and company name was decided cabra.com after 3 months he changed the name amazon.com because the search engine starts from a a alphabet and searching the name of any company that's why he shifted from 
cabra dot com to amazon dot com, and Amazon is the name of the river in South America. He purchased Mitra dot com in two thousand fourteen, and in two thousand nine, his business turnover was four crores, and in two thousand nineteen, his business turnover was one hundred twenty three point nine billion US dollars. friends why i'm citing this example this story its basic reason is the artificial intelligence is very very useful for commercial transactions as per my study and observation after 2025 30 good number of business houses will start considerably the use of artificial intelligence then this person made good number of changes in packing packaging how the packaging is comfortable and this company is not none other than the amazon at present amazon is using artificial intelligence quality work leadership innovation growth mindset work life harmony company culture empowering the people risk taking online book selling ideas and it is possible with the help of artificial intelligence how to take the decision very prompt decision good decision very effective decision who are the buyers of the books what is their location these things mapping tapping is possible with the smart assistants that is the artificial intelligence the same thing using by the bill gates same thing using by the politicians same artificial intelligence using for commercial transactions you refer to another example another story alibaba he supplies the goods in 24 hours in china jagdish singh honey king these all examples indicates in e-commerce electronic commerce for business to customers customers to customers business to employees business to government government to business government to government and government to citizen for doing these all type of commercial transactions permutations and combinations the electronic commerce artificial intelligence is necessary at present good number of companies have been using ai for their decision making process business to business consumer to business and government to business and vice versa this electronic commerce the same thing is using by the flip cart started in 2007 by two friends sachin and binni they don't have any background of family business started this business with worth rupees 4 lakhs and they have been continuously performing satisfying the customers providing innovative ideas implementing the innovative ideas by way of networking with the help of artificial intelligence dear participants e-commerce is equal to the change before change changes us or changes you we have to change the first speaker dr sidnar madam 
she highlighted about the 4.2 for the generation of industrial revolution and what are the opportunities are there opportunities are there in a cyber security by way of artificial intelligence opportunities are there in higher education mooc model different lms systems this artificial intelligence has a tremendous future scope for doing the business processes ai is useful ai is very much useful in financial sector banking sector money market security market it is very very convenient useful significant in the study of consumer behavior customers behavior buyers or purchasers behavior why they are buying when they are buying at what circumstances they have been buying it means that one has to change before change changes us for that artificial intelligence is very much essential in electronic commerce in electronic commerce e planning e skills e stock e designing e retailing e networking e social media electronic customer to customer business to business middleman to the customer etc e governances and e businesses this artificial intelligence machine support intelligence computer support intelligence is necessary if you move from barter exchange to the online marketing the drastic changes considerable changes have been taken place if you refer the another example who started the hiring the car business because this fellow dropped one of the car driver in transit and then he realized the importance of the vehicle in 2010 he have been started website based online car providing business service developed the mobile app in 2010 he worked as a driver and he business this is none other than the ola car bhavish agrawal at present 102 cities he have been running 15 lakh drivers are there every day he receives the 1 million request per day 43 lakhs 40770 km traveling of his car and this is possible because of artificial intelligence the machine support intelligence the permutation combination where customers are placed the order where we have to send the car which car is available near to that customer these all combinations permutations statistical calculations become easy because of artificial intelligence in a simple world e-commerce having very close relation with artificial intelligence in a simple word intellectual commerce emotional commerce knowledge based commerce physical commerce social commerce divine commerce lot of challenges are there i will not touch the challenges to overcome from the challenges artificial intelligence 
plays a dominant role if you think about the indian scenario e-commerce is performing very very important role fast trading is possible wide choices are available time saving is possible better customers we can attract mass marketing is possible market cost we can able to minimize 24 by 7 facilities can be made available more flexible and for this electronic commerce is more useful by way of email marketing internet messages online shopping online banking electronic ticketing and many more so dear participants very fast changes are there alvin toffler made a statement in his book the future shocks from agriculture took the development thousands of years for industrial development hundreds of years information technology related development tens of years it is not just change it is a rate of change the first speaker madam she was highlighted good number of years we consumed for utilization of the mobiles but within one year we reached that much quantity of use of pokemon such a type of games it is not just a change but the rate of change is matters and to cope up with the rate of change or cope up with this development cycle in economy in self life everybody's life the artificial intelligence is significant because it is cost effective i know very well there may be a boomerang but one has to accept we have to accept there is no any another alternate to run away from such a type of intelligence and specifically in electronic commerce with this i'm stopping my presentation because it is 4 30 i'm very much thankful to the organizer and i'm very much thankful to the all audience and once again i'm saying sorry because of some inconvenience in connectivity over to imran sir thank you thank you so much sir thank you so much and uh, uh, since this is a virtual um, you know event i think uh, there should be no sorries because of the technical glitches but we once again thank you uh, uh, thank you sir for joining us back uh, you know with your presentation uh, so uh, before uh, you know we do have any questions uh, so we'll quickly move on to the next paper presenter uh, so uh, we uh, i now call mr litton um, you know uh, for, for, to this virtual platform to present his paper and uh, i i please i sincerely request you to please consider the time frame which is allotted to you for your paper presentations uh, okay uh, over to you mr litton thank you so much am i audible uh, yes yes mr litton please you audible please go ahead Uh, is my is my screen visible sir yeah yeah it's visible yeah just a second Uh, so good uh, good evening i should say because uh, you know it's quite late and i think um, we have um, had a lot of time so uh, special greetings from shivaji university uh, and i would like to express my um, gratitude to 
KLS societies for giving me the opportunity to present my paper on this special international webinar on artificial intelligence. So we have been greatly enriched um, by uh, different speakers uh, because we had uh, Dr. Nandini giving us uh, very good information on industrial revolution. Then we had Aman sir, and then obviously we had Professor Dr. Uh, A.M. Gurav uh, helping um, us to understand. Um, so am I audible? Audible still? I will have to ask because you know I get yeah, 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 you are perfectly audible. Please go ahead. Okay. So the title of my paper is um, actually the future scope of artificial intelligence and the road ahead. So I will be uh, basically giving you insights as to what artificial artificial intelligence is and what are the scope it has and how it is. Uh, integrated in different systems and how it is working today. So my name is Liton Prashad Mowali. I'm a research scholar from the Department of Commerce and Management, Shiva University. And I'm also an assistant professor at SIT. Um, so dear participant, uh, as we all know that artificial intelligence um, is basically uh, can be considered as the intelligence of machines. Um, which try to mimic the human intelligence. So it is basically the simulation of human intelligence that is processed by machine and especially the computer system. And when you think about the scope of artificial intelligence, it is growing in leaps and bounds. You know, you can think about um, artificial intelligence in everything today. So whatever we want to do today, we have to think about how this machine learning, how artificial intelligence is going to, you know, um, going to uh, get into our day-to-day -day life. So uh, artificial intelligence is used in almost major sectors. You think about agriculture, healthcare, education, infrastructure development, transportation, cyber security, banking, manufacturing, business, hospitality, entertainment, and so on. It is used in many sectors today. Uh, and there is not just a single technology under artificial intelligence. So when you talk about artificial intelligence, we're not talking actually only one single technology because there are many useful technology under the umbrella. And they are like machine learning, pattern recognition, self-improving algor algorithm, big data, and so on. And so the future of artificial intelligence is highly promising worldwide. And when you think about India, there's so much of so much of future of artificial intelligence over here. So the so this particular paper actually has been written on the backdrop of this future scope of artificial intelligence and how it is going to transform how you think, how I think, how we work, how we solve our day-to-day -day problems, both at the workplace as well as you know daily life. So the basic objective of this study is to study the future scope of artificial intelligence and to draw the conclusion based on the study. So my research work is purely descriptive and conceptual in nature. And the prime purpose of the study is to disclose the future scope of the AI. Uh, and it is uh, written based on secondary source of data. So as we know that I have been uh, referring different national international journals um, and online books, websites, and different other materials so that I could present my data in a most variable, uh, verifiable and factual way. So what is the future scope of artificial intelligence? You know, uh, I, uh, artificial intelligence has made its entry into various avenues of work. Um, and it is used in multiple ways today. It is incorporated in many uh, types of technology. And one of the example of that is um, RPA, where is robotic process automation. Uh, deep learning is another um, aspect of artificial intelligence and researchers all over the world uh, are applying today um, this, this particular aspect of machine learning to develop robots um, and that can interact in social setting. So when you think about artificial intelligence, it has a wider scope um, in every field that we can think of. It has a wider horizon. Um, and I am going to just uh, discuss a few of them. Think about artificial intelligence in business. In business, uh, 
especially for business analytics, customer relationship management, AI is used today. Machine learning algorithm is used in business uh, dealings today to serve the customer better. And artificial enabled chatbots are today available so that they can serve the customer. The customer are asking questions, chatbots are enabled, so they are giving the answers uh, immediately. Uh, so when you think about artificial intelligence in business, uh, it, is, it is all pervading because it is providing all types of support, uh, starting from understanding the customer, understanding their preferences, their taste, even handling their grievances. Uh, another thing is uh, use of artificial intelligence in business. You know, um, business today is worldwide and so much things are going on. So in order to collect the personal data, uh, to prepare their tax files, uh, provide appropriate informational and financial advice, um, artificial intelligence is used in finance. In the US, um, an integrated IA, AI system like IBM Watson is used even uh, to buy homes. Stock markets are uh, using, for example, Wall Street or uh, National Stock Exchange of India are greatly handled by AI-enabled AI programs today. When you think about manufacturing, industrial robots uh, used to be used in order to perform a single task, but today we have cobots. Industrial robots are basically uh, working separate from human beings, but today cobots are um, you know, created where um, these robots are working in integration with women, human minds uh, and solving a lot of problem in manufacturing. And in future, if you think about the scope, in future, cobots will be performing different types of work, like maintaining the warehouses, serving in factory uh, floors, and uh, maintaining the workspaces. And uh, as Professor Gurup already mentioned, you know, there's so much, so much to do with uh, artificial intelligence. Think about marketing and advertising today. You know, sales and marketing are greatly using artificial intelligence um, in uh, personalized marketing. Uh, even uh, even uh, today, artificial intelligence supported facial recognition is used. You know, I was just watching one uh, particular video from YouTube where uh, things are purchased by customers uh, and uh, uh, the AI is used in order to just get the facial recognition and everything is coming up and all the calculation, how many things that they are taking. So you see how in marketing, advertising and sales it is used. Think about banking, you know, today in banking, um, artificial intelligence uh, enable virtual assistants are uh, available. Uh, they're making the decisions about uh, what type of loan should be sanctioned, uh, what credit limit should be given to the customers, uh, even identifying the prospective investment. These are done uh, through the help of artificial intelligence. Chatbots are used by bank in order to create awareness among the customers uh, handle customer transaction. So in future, the banking industry is going to be completely automated. Uh, and it says that because of artificial intelligence, data analysis and insight has increased 60%. Productivity has increased 59%. Cost be benefit saving has increased 54%. Uh, so you can understand how artificial intelligence is being used and how it is pervading in all areas. Think about data analysis. Uh, artificial intelligence is used in data analysis today. Wherever human minds are failing because artificial intelligence is able to perceive the pattern and the similarities in data, so it is able to analyze the data more objectively. You know, one of the example of uh, such data analysis, uh, artificial intelligence integrated program is Fluid, uh, which is used uh, um, by uh, IBM and IBM has created um, uh, 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 artificial intelligence um, program called Watson, uh, which is providing uh, support to the customers in data analysis. Cybersecurity is a great problem today. You know, so much of cyber attack, but artificial intelligence is used um, and machine learning um, is used for security information to detect inconsistency, to identify suspicious activities, malicious code, so that cyber attack can be uh, prevented. Um, one of these software like Novel um, AI, 
which is um, which is a particular software called recurrent neural neural network is used in order to detect um, uh, fraudery. So, and when you think about education today, um, uh, automated grading is done through the help of AI. Teachers are not overloaded. Teachers are going to be given a lot of flexibility because a lot of monotonous work, grading, you know, entering uh, uh, the grades of the students and writing a lot of things should be taken, okay, taken care of by uh, artificial intelligence. Even virtual tutor are available today. So, you know, in future, um, AI-enabled tutor might be replacing some of the teachers if they do not change with the time. And uh, here is an example of that. Um, when you think about um, science, a robot called Eve uh, that is created by a group of scientists from Manchester University, they have found out an ingredient in toothpaste that is capable of curing malaria. So robots are doing research today. Synthetic biology in another area where um, AI is helping self-driving cars for um, transport areas, you know, um, it is, uh, AI is used in order uh, to have cars and uh, the cars are just moving without the driver, you know, the drivers are still there because they're uh, sitting there in order to ensure the safety, but in future, there will be cars full automated and just imagine what's going to happen. This is one of the example of that. In healthcare, um, artificial intelligence is used in order to provide quicker and better diagnosis uh, for different diseases. Uh, and uh, virtual health assistants are available, chatbots are available so that um, patients can get better information, healthcare seeking customers can get uh, better information. Even in, during pandemic time, uh, various technologies are used in order to identify find and understand viruses such as COVID-19. So um, when you look at uh, AI, AI is actually used in various jobs today. Uh, and automation is going to take care of all the critical things that are going on today. A lot, a lot of monotonous work that are done by people. A lot of things are going to come up. Uh, and in future, um, we, might, we might presume that artificial intelligence might blanket even the dangerous jobs like bone diffusion um, and other thing. Emotion bots um, are going to be used like we are using today. Um, virtual assistant like Siri and then Alexa, uh, they are supporting, they're understanding the language of human being, understanding the feelings of humans. So, you know, so when you think about artificial intelligence and a scope, it's going to be an autom automobile in business, education, finance, healthcare and many of this. So um, here is a, you know, um, a particular uh, video just for one minute. I would like to show where you can see how soul machine is going to come up in future, where um, every, every aspect of human feeling and emotion will be shown through this use of artificial intelligence, um, where even the machine is going to understand human emotion fully and will be providing various support. So we, we are coming to a time um, when uh, artificial intelligence is going to serve us everything that we imagine today. Uh, so um, uh, with this, I would like to conclude my paper. Uh, as we all know that artificial intelligence is the latest buzzword of technology today. And we are living in a world of innovation and technology and it is moving in swift progression. And AI is being used uh, today by well-known techno giants companies like Facebook, Twitter, Apple, and Google. And it is pervading all types of jobs. And in future, there will be a lot of careers. If you are an AI um, aware person, you might be getting like some of the work uh, that is going to come up is like data analytics, machine learning, big data, data mining. So in all these, um, there will be a lot of job opportunities. And so we have to get acquainted with how AI works, how it operates, so that we can integrate ourselves, adapt ourselves uh, with this. So it is difficult at this particular moment to comprehend the future of AI fully at this moment, but we, we can be uh, sure that the future is very bright and uh, we are not able to Im imagine now what is going to happen, but AI is surely going to transform the world in coming years 
and the transition has already started. So it is going to be in all types of organization, in all types of human experience, and it's going to be an autonomous uh, you know, support, and it is going to be all pervasive knowledge. So with that, I would like to end my paper. Thank you so much. And I would like to uh, thank the college for giving me the opportunity. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Little. Thank you so much. Uh, Ms. Uh, Shailaja is our next presenter. The virtual floor is all yours, uh, Ms. Shailaja. And please uh, you know, keep in mind uh, the time frame for your uh, paper presentation. Over to you, Ms. Uh, Shailaja. Um, good evening, sir. Good evening, everyone here. Uh, so can I share my screen here? I'm unable to do that. Uh, I have made your co-host, please. Yeah. yeah, just a minute, sir. Um, or just can I uh, explain the things because I think there is some problem with my system. Yeah, here. yeah, perfectly, perfectly, ma'am, perfectly. All is right, you can me? go ahead. Yeah. Okay, and then it would be great. Um, one minute, sir. As we all are speaking about, you know, artificial intelligence, uh, I just like to. Uh, put on a few points on artificial trends where we are leading towards uh, this decade, 2021 or no, 2021 to till the end of this decade. So what are the things to be watched out from our end and from all, all of us? Is it a bone or a curse? First, let us see what's artificial intelligence. How does it uh, helpful? It is a story which uh, starts, I think, believe from 2010 onwards, we all are experiencing, experiencing all the intelligence which uh, we use technology in day-to-day -day life. And we see most of the movies, gadgets are all based on our AI. While still the prediction is going on, uh, how this... 2021 to 2030 decade goes in irrespective of all the fields it might be small scale industries of our education or a science or hospitality so how does it work so here are a few predictions which uh, there are works going on i have searched on it so just uh, i'm just brushing up it how does it work there are so many industries where uh, robots are already working. Few of already a senior lecturers have presented. I would like to give an example here, uh, where in China, most of the hotels, there we do not have any manpower over there. We have only uh, robots working over everywhere. So for example, just an instance, uh, there is an hotel uh, where you need to log in and log out from your iris. Uh, instead of face recognition, it takes eye, uh, eye nerves, which we call it as eye iris. It takes a scan of that and then. I have seen a recent movie, uh, just a glimpse of that, where uh, people are hiring robots for their daily usage, day-to-day -day work because of a stressed out. As we see these days, robots do not have feelings, we say. Uh, I think we all are aware of a movie called uh, Robot. So where in the end that no, uh, uh, they put on the feelings to the robots and how it destroys. So that we can say it's as a curse to our life. As long as robots are involved in the day-to-day -day life, uh, yes, it's useful. But how come it comes up again? Artificial intelligence and machine learning what we say the latest trend it is combination of both computers and um, you no know, humans because we are the one who build them we are the one where we train our robots we design it and then we get into usage to our daily life so ai becomes increasingly useful as data becomes more accurate and available so uh, AI, for example, uh, we uh, while typing, uh, it might be our WhatsApp or we cover be mail or searching the data or for research work. Uh, 
there is a backend data where it is stored it gives a suggestion for us more and more so i think uh, we are becoming lazy as well uh, because it gives a immediate word over there and immediate results yes it is helping us to reduce our time and we can utilize it in other way but that's the reason we say it becomes useful uh, when the we get a results more accurate and expected more devices will run ai powered technology uh, we see day to day uh, advertisement in our uh, television or even while searching there will be a pop up windows uh, where they show examples like everything is controlled in our mobile or ai watches smart watches we have uh but just we wear a wrist watch and everything is controlled on that for example we have a smart lights where we can control it through remotes acs uh, no lights fans we can uh, if we uh, log out of our home without switching off everything and then we can just off it through our watches so such ai powered technologies is a boon to us with which can save many lives in day to day life human and ai cooperation increases by doing such and where companies uh, it companies and different de departments are hiring people to match a gap between our ai devices and the people like uh, employers are uh, training people it is assumed that there is around 75 to 80% gap the way we work Uh, physically and from ai devices so to reduce that to match that gap people are getting trained uh, i i would like to repeat a quote here one of our lecturer or presenter has already said it survival of the fittest so in along with that survival of the no uh, fastest who can adopt to the technology very quick pace as per the requirement so that's how the cooperation increases and it is must needed for the time so it is cutting edge technology uh, uh, where we can i can give an example for netflix or no amazon prime or even we can take an example for cab drivers where they use ai Uh, i have recently read the story that uh, one cab driver who is good at very good at coding uh, he has used machine learning and ai so that uh, he knows how that machine learning algorithm works how do they assign cabs to the drivers and what basis so he, here bit ups and downs changes he did so that he get more assigned the clients or the customers only for him so that his automatically income increases so machine learning and artificial intelligence and we humans uh, we go hand in hand where we need to meet the gap ai increasingly used the creating films music and games as i said like netflix uh, is used for one of that no so video streaming games and there are few other applications and softwares where artificial intelligence is used these days more games are designed using ai one of them uh, we can say shooting games or a chess games where we individually try to compete uh, to the system to say we are playing against the you no know, computers or a system or any gadgets we have logged in for that matter how do we work so these are the few trends hello yes sir yes ma'am so can i continue another 2 minutes sir just 2 minutes yeah please wind up yeah yeah you can yeah. conclude yeah so these are the trends uh, where uh, we are uh, we can look down more into and research are still going on even in small scale industry it is available so we have to be ready for another you no know, for this decade continuously not only in china even in india doctors are using robots for a you know, critical uh, 
operations and how to diagnose them. So these are the few things where we can look into it for this complete new decade, I would like to say. Uh, that's all from my answer. Thank you for giving opportunity. Okay, uh, thank you, Saraja. Thank you so much. Uh, so uh, finally, we have Ms. Sabia with us who will be presenting her paper now. Uh, over to you, Sabia. Oh, sir, I'm unable to share the screen. Um, okay. Just give me a minute. Yeah. Um. Yes, ma'am, you can share the screen now. Yeah, Sabia, yeah, you can go ahead now. Sabia? Yes. Yeah, you can share your screen. Is that visible, sir? Yeah, it's visible. Continue. Yeah. Yeah, go ahead, Sabia. Yeah. So, good evening, everyone. Myself, Sabia Masudupi. Currently, I am a student of SSMS College, Athani, and studying in Become Second, sir. So, I am going to present my paper about the topic Artificial Intelligence and Mathematics. I will promise I am not going to take a lot of time now. So, before jumping into the topic, uh, let's first talk a bit about the history of AI. First of all, for all of us, artificial intelligence is not a new word and for researchers, it's not a new technology. But the birth of AI was began with the evolution of artificial neurons in 1943 and permanently founded in 1995. Alain Neville and Herbert Simon created the first AI program, which was named as Logic Theorist. AI is the branch of computer science like uh, its other branches and it has faced a lot of failures and loss. Then it has gained new approaches, renewed funding, support and success. A uh, few of the subfields of AI are machine learning, natural language processing, speech recognition, etc. The main object of my presentation is to know the basics of AI, to understand the relation between AI and mathematics, to know how mathematics helps AI and to talk something about the topic, will uh, AI abolishes mathematics or not? So let's jump into the topic. When we think the working of AI, it uh, involves the using computers to do things that uh, traditionally require human intelligence, which includes classifying, analyzing, and drawing predictions from data. It provides a software that can reason on input and explains on output. Let's see what is the relation of AI with mathematics. When we think about mathematics, just numbers comes in our mind, but artificial intelligence is probability, statistics, linear algebra, and real analysis are still extensively used with the topics of mathematics. Mathematics is considered as the core element of AI and machine learning. As machines are becoming increasingly capable, tasks are considered to require intelligence, and this intelligence is hence provided and developed by the mathematical modeling. AI basically deals and uh, focuses on expanding novel technologies and supporting mathematics. AI has the potential and power to impact the practice of mathematical modeling. Let's move with how AI helps, sorry, how mathematics helps AI. AI tries to emulate the way of reasoning of human mind and intelligence. For that, mathematics helps in knowing more about logical reasoning and attention in detail. There are main three branches of mathematics. They are linear algebra, calculus, and probability. Basically, linear algebra deals with the vectors, matrix, 
and transforms, which is something AI experts can't live without. Mathematics helps AI to get real solutions and helps to solve hypothetical problems. Here, the hypothetical problems means a question uh, which is based on assumptions rather than facts. So let's move with will AI abolish mathematics or not? We can say that artificial intelligence and mathematics are the two wheels of one bicycle. Uh, both require each other to grow, develop, and expand their areas. Neither of them can grow without the other. Many critical economical problems have been solved by both mathematics and AI. When we think about solving the math problems with the help of AI, it's quite easy in today's modern world. For example, our kids are using many apps, websites for uh, solving their math problems easily and step by step. AI and mathematics are those branches of the same tree which are growing, developing and expanding their areas and trying to help people with new technologies. At last, I would like to conclude that the field of AI was founded on the assumption that human intelligence can be pres prescribed described that a machine can be made to stimulate it. So mathematics is helping AI scientists in solving problems with traditional methods. And practically without math, there is no artificial intelligence and there is no computer science. With this, I would like to thank each and every one participant who is here. And I would like to thank our college principal, SL Patil sir, BM Kiremat sir, and the Department of Commerce for giving me this wonderful opportunity. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much, Samia. Uh, thank you so much. Um, uh, so, uh, ladies and gentlemen, it's now time to conclude this uh, eventful afternoon with all the smiles, thanks, and gratitude. And for that, I call upon uh, Ms. Sindhu to deliver the vote of thanks. Uh, over to you, uh, Sindhu. Can you hear me now? Yes, Sindhu. Go ahead. Respected dignitaries present on this occasion of I2AC Initiative International Webinar on Artificial Intelligence organized by the Department of Commerce uh, of SSMS College of I am here to propose vote of thanks. At the outset, I place on record my sincere gratitude to the keynote speaker of today's international webinar, Dr. Nantini Sid Sidnal, Senior Lecturer and Course Coordinator, Master of Networking, School of IT Engineering, Academic Department, Sydney, Australia, for being with us as keynote speaker and enlightening us. First, thank you, madam. Thank you so much. I thank uh, Dr. Anna Saheb, M. Gurav, Professor, Department of Commerce and Management, Shivaji, University, Kolhapur, for, for being with us as a resource person. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much you were excellent for your excellent presentation. I also thank our beloved principal, Professor S. L. Patil, sir, for uh, your constant support and encouragement in making this webinar a success. Thank you so much, sir. I will fail in my duty if I fail to express my heartfelt gratitude to all the paper presenters and delegates for, for sparing their valuable time with us. Thank you so much. And my wholehearted thanks are also due all my uh, learned teachers, technical staff, and my dear friends for uh, making this event a great success. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much for giving me such a great opportunity. Okay. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Sindhu. Uh, so on behalf of the college, uh, we would like to extend our gratitude and thanks to uh, Dr. Uh, Nandini Ma'am and uh, Professor Grosso for being here with us and spending their valuable time, information and research. Uh, on the subject of artificial intelligence. Uh, so on behalf of Kelly Society's uh, SSMS College and our presenters, uh, thank you for joining us today and have a great evening. Thank you so much.